Huh. Looks like Jameson's got a new episode out. Wonder what my number one fan thinks about the fist takedown. This is Just a Facts with J. Jonah Jameson, where listeners like you discuss the issues affecting our city with Pulitzer Prize winning two time! Two time. Pulitzer Prize winning former publisher of the Daily Bugle. Hey! Blood the book! And. And as always, if you order Mr. Jameson's book, Spider-Man, Threat or Menace, within 24 hours of our broadcast, you'll get an autographed copy at no extra charge. No personalizations, don't ask, not gonna get it. Welcome to Just the Facts with J. Jonah Jameson, alerting you to the threats you don't even know about. Let's dive right into the calls. Speak. Okay, so not for nothing, you gotta give Spider-Man respect for taking down Wilson Fisk, right? I mean, one last mob boss is good forever. Is that right? Tell me, are you a police officer? Prosecutor? Maybe an award-winning reporter with decades on the job like me? Uh, no, I'm a plumber. Oh, good. Then fix my toilet and shut up! Let me explain something to you about crime As Soon as one goes down, every punk with a gun, a tracksuit, and a drawer full of gold chains decides he's the next godfather. We're gonna have a gang war on the street, but does that whip-headed moron give a damn? Of course not. He got on TV. That's what counts. <laughs> yeah, well, I can get caught the pipe without paying kickbacks now. So until that gang war starts, I'm on the webhead side. And you'll be singing a different tune when three new mobs are lining up to charge you triple for that same pipe. Or just break your legs. Goodbye! Ah, uh, someday, Jonah. I'm gonna get you to say something nice about me. Someday. My loyal listeners, brush heads they call themselves, though i uh, never quite understood why, will remember my warnings about the downright Orwellian crime monitoring system the city was installing. Well, it's not operating. Why, you ask? Because someone came to their senses and realized they'd be violating civil liberties? Wrong! Because those incompetent bureaucrats built a network that crashes more often than a wino driving a bumper car. So your tax dollars got wasted, and there's nothing to show for it. Which is about as close as you get to a happy ending in the real world, kids. As I warned, Nostradamus like. After Spider Man recklessly took down Wilson Fisk without preparing for the consequences, our streets are now filled with aspiring gangsters, each trying to out psycho the other. My next guest is lucky to have survived an armed robbery. Sir, we're glad you're okay. Thanks. It was nuts. These dudes walk in like they own the place, waving guns around. Appalling. When a businessman is afraid to make an honest living. Yeah, it was a lifesaver that Spider Man came along and stopped him. Weren't you listening? He caused the problem! I uh, did... Forgive me for raising my voice. I'm emotional at the thought of what you went through. Jared, our caller seems shaken. Let's let him go. I'm fine. Goodbye! And now for listener emails. May from Queens writes, You're so full of anger and I wish you'd get help managing it. It's terrible for your health. Now I know she speaks from a place of concern, but this is a common misconception that I have to correct. I'm not full of anger. I'm full of love. I call out injustice, corruption, and crimes against humanity because I adore this city. And I want it to be better. What you hear in my voice is nothing but love. I understand we have another low-information caller who thinks we're better off thanks to Spider-Man. Let's see if I can set her straight. You're on with J. Jonah James. I just want to say that I've never seen Manhattan so safe and peaceful. Compare what it was like when Spider-Man first showed up to now. Okay, fair enough, I will. Then, we had police and firefighters doing a wonderful job. There was crime, sure, but nothing they couldn't handle. Of course, we do have things now we didn't have then. Maniacs who shoot electricity out of their eyes. Walking piles of sand. Nazis made of bees! Didn't Spider-Man put all those guys in jail? 
You're missing the point. They didn't exist before he came along. At best, he attracts them. But I've often wondered if they're in cahoots. Wow. I've never actually heard anyone say cahoots before. Look, all I'm saying is, I'd hate to imagine what would have happened if all those guys showed up and Spider-Man wasn't here. Another lost cause. Goodbye. You might have heard about the robbery at Roseman's auction house. What you probably didn't hear, but my sources confirm, is that the perpetrators were wearing masks. Horrible, demonic faces. Yet another example of the explosion in mass criminals since Spider-Man came on the scene. Let's hear your thoughts. Here on with J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah, I see your point, but Spider-Man stopped those guys today. Saying he's like them because he wears a mask isn't fair. It's like a prejudice. Wrong. Here's a little lesson in the English language, my friend. Prejudice means to prejudge someone before you know anything about them. I know all I need to about Spider-Man. He runs around causing chaos, wearing a mask so he doesn't have to answer for his shenanigans, and a flashy costume so he gets attention to feed his gigantic, insatiable ego. Now, if I'm a mentally unstable person, and I see him getting all this coverage, what am I going to do? It's called copycat behavior, people, and it's ruining New York. Folks, I have to once again defend myself against the spurious claims from McDonald Mac Gargan, a.k.a. The Scorpion. Yes, as I fully disclosed, I bankrolled the experiment that gave him superior strength, speed, and that unsightly cyborg tail. The idea was to create an anti-Spider-Man who is not a threat and stops menaces. I had no idea he was crazy. Do you think his resume said psycho with a poisoning fetish? His lawsuit is a transparent attempt to reduce his sentence at the raft by placing the blame for his deeds on me. And that is one package J. Jonah Jameson refuses. I've always been about the truth. When I was a reporter and a newspaper publisher, I printed the truth. And now as a broadcaster, I speak the truth. Sometimes it hurts. But it's my responsibility to bring it to you. And the truth is, the city is not quiet. It is not peaceful. It is a disaster waiting to happen. Threats roiling under the surface like a hungry shark just beneath the water. Don't let Spider-Man fool you. You are not safe. None of us are. Now, a lot of people ask me what I think of Mayor Osborne, but what matters is what you think. Let's ask our first caller. You're on with J. Jonah Jinks. Hi, I think Mayor Osborne's doing a terrific job. He's cleaned the city up and expanded the economy. With all due respect to the office of mayor, the police cleaned up the city, and entrepreneurs boosted the economy. I do approve of many of the mayor's initiatives, like cracking down on quality of life crimes and reducing red tape. But I think he takes credit for a lot of things other people do. He's ambitious, which is not a bad thing. But I always say, be careful of people with agendas. We used to have a vigilant press to keep politicians honest. But it's a shadow of its former self. Now all you've really got is... discuss the costume lunatic who just literally destroyed a bank. Wait, you think I'm talking about Herman Schultz? Oh, no. I meant Spider-Man. Look, Schultz is a career criminal. Obviously disturbed. I mean, he calls himself the Shocker. So I don't expect him to act like a sane person. But Spider-Man claims to be a hero. Well, tell that to the bank employees who are out of a job. 
The customers who had irreplaceable family heirlooms in the safe deposit boxes. Couldn't he have waited until Schultz was, I don't know, outside to start the fight? Of course, then he would have probably wrecked several people's cars. Because Spider-Man views our city as his playground and your property as his toys. And he just loves smashing his toys together. Friends, I've just received an update on Adrian Toomes, a.k.a. The Vulture. Apparently, this winged criminal has fallen ill with cancer, and he's been moved to the Raft's infirmary for treatment, which will undoubtedly cost a fortune in public funds. Now, let me ask you, why do we even have an infirmary at the Raft? It's a supermax prison full of maniacs. If they get sick, let nature take its course. Now, I realize that's harsh, but so is my tax bill. Now, how often do I say Spider-Man should let the police handle crime? At least six times a day, and that's on my day off. And for once, that is exactly what happened. When Officer Jefferson Davis stopped a truck full of armed criminals from mowing down innocent bystanders. What about Spider-Man, you ask? Where was the city's self-styled champion? Oh, he's the one who started this chase. Right out of an 80s action movie. But it took a real hero to finish it. Thank God Officer Davis was on the scene, and that he saved all those lives in spite of Spider-Man's interference. Jefferson Davis, you have earned the coveted J. Jonah Jameson nod of respect. I just nodded. It's all over the news. Another battle between Spider-Man and these demon-masked gunmen threatening the lives of New Yorkers. I understand our next caller lives in the area. You're on with J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah, um, the thing is, it all happened in a shipyard that's been closed for years. There weren't any innocent people in danger. Oh, is that your expert opinion? Well, let me tell you what I've learned from sources I developed in my award-winning journalism career. That shipyard was a front for Wilson Fisk. He's been using it to smuggle guns, grenades, military-grade ordnance. Oh, that explains a lot. Ah, the truth bomb strikes. But wait, here's a 50-megaton payload of fact. While Spider-Man tried to grab the glory for himself, chasing one truck, another vehicle got away with an arsenal of deadly, illegal weapons. Fisk, for all his faults, would never have let them be used in this city. But these demons? Either they're some kind of fanatical cult, or they just don't care. Anybody feel like they're in danger now? A helicopter fight, trailing a train in the air above our teeming streets, on which it could have crashed at any moment in a blazing rotor-chopping fireball of doom. Still think the webhead's protecting people like you, caller? Well, he stopped them, and he made sure the helicopter didn't land on anyone. So, it seems to me he did the right thing. Right thing? The right thing would be to call the professionals. My son serves proudly in the Air Force. He's logged thousands of hours of flight time and years of training in protecting our homeland. But he's not good enough? Well, of course he is, but he wasn't there. Spider-Man was. Because that's how he wanted it! God forbid he share the spotlight with anyone! That's it. I'm done pointing out the obvious. Let's go to commercials. I need a double aspirin with an antacid chaser! No! Today is a day for somber reflection, for mourning, and honoring fallen heroes like Jefferson Davis. But it's also a day to vow never again. It stops here. Some people say I blame everything on Spider-Man. Well, I don't blame him for the bombing. That cowardly act is squarely the responsibility of whoever committed it. But if we're gonna keep New York safe, can no longer tolerate the kind of lawlessness Spider-Man and his ilk 
represent. This is our city. By God, we're going to take it back. Friends, today we have a very special caller breaking important news right here because where else? Mayor Osborne, thanks for calling in. No, thank you, Jonah. When you were publishing the Bugle, you were always fair to me. Tough, sure, but fair. Well, that's my job, Mr. Mayor. All I have is my integrity, and I won't compromise it for anyone. Now, what's this crucial breaking news you're revealing for the first time anywhere on my show? Well, after the brutal, cowardly city hall bombing that almost claimed my life, it's clear our understaffed police department needs help. And I want to reassure the people of New York that I am providing it. Aha! I said it! You all heard me say we needed this. Are you using my idea of bringing in cops from Lake Placid? Ah, no. Though that was a fine idea. No, this would be a security contractor, much like the ones our military uses to assist our troops overseas. I can't name it until the contracts are signed, but their qualifications are impeccable. Well, that sounds terrific, Mr. Mayor. Though, of course, I'll have to reserve my tough but fair final judgment until I have all the facts. I'd expect nothing less. And let me stress, this is in no way replacing our brave officers of the law, just augmenting them in a way that cuts through the red tape and gets results. And results are what we want. You know, I'm glad you're here. So I can share my theory on how Spider-Man may well be working with the demons. And a fascinating theory it is, I'm sure. But my doctors are advising me to get some rest now, so if you don't mind. Oh, of course. Thank you for calling in, Mr. Mayor. My lines are open for you anytime. Jared, did you hear? Tough, but fair! That's our new slogan. I don't care who else is using it! Don't care! Breaking news just in. My sources tell me the police are now looking at the demons as the primary suspects in the city hall bombing. If that is in fact the case, I retract what I said about Spider-Man not being to blame. He would be, at the very least, partially responsible. Because the reckless manner in which Wilson Fisk was brought down directly created the void the demons poured into like the poison they are. Actions have consequences, my friends. That's something Spider-Man has never understood. I have to tell you, Triple J, I used to think you were exaggerating the danger to the city, but after the city hall bombing, I gotta admit, you were right. A lot of people have been telling me that, congratulating me, but I don't want congratulations. I would have loved to have been wrong, or better yet, for those in a position of power to have listened to me and done something. But they didn't, and I'm not sure they'll listen now. Unless concerned citizens like you and I make ourselves impossible to ignore. Stand up! Take your city back! That's the only way we can ever be sure that justice will be done. That and listening to me every day! I got an interesting tip today. Remember that barbaric beast named the Rhino? Apparently last night he almost escaped from his cell in the raft. How, you ask? Well, no one there seems to know, but they assure me he's been relocated to a more secure cell. Now, I'm no expert on Supermax prisons, but isn't the whole point of them that there isn't anything else more secure? I mean, he's a 700-pound maniac with an indestructible horn. If there's a more secure cell, why wasn't he in it? Now, here's a frightening thought. Oscorp does research and development for the military. Are the demons after experimental weapons? If I was a psychotic cult, I would be. I wonder where they got the idea. 
One highly visible figure has made a career out of fighting madmen with lethal experimental technology like light suits, tectonic gauntlets, and gigantic scorpion tails. No, 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 don't say the name. I just ate. started, folks. I'm getting word of a serious increase in the drug trade in our fair city. And it's not the demons or Wilson Fisk's former people. Criminals across the board are getting bolder. Just as I predicted, the rats are crawling out of their holes, sensing weakness and opportunity. No one listened to me before. I pray they'll listen to me now. Be careful out there. A group of terrorists assassinate American citizens in a bombing attack. How is it possible that instead of being wiped out of existence, these masked criminals are still at large and still striking at innocent people like Oscorp CFO Charles Standish in their own homes? How? You're on with J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah, uh, my cousin's a corrections officer, and he says the demons they've arrested aren't talking. They clam up, won't even speak to their lawyers. This underscores a concern I've had about these demons. They're not regular criminals. They might not even be ordinary terrorists, although they certainly commit terrorist acts. But it looks to me more and more like they're a cult. Are you kidding me? Those kind of people are out of their minds. They'll do anything. It's horrifying, isn't it? Does this mean that we have to live in fear? To be constantly looking over our shoulders? To expect an attack at any moment? My opinion, folks, the answer is yes. Let's talk about Halloween, folks. It may be good fun for the kids to dress up as a cowboy or astronaut or ballerina and trick-or-treat, but this trend of grown adults glorifying the likes of Spider-Man by dressing up as them is, especially in the times we live in, disturbing. What say you, Gino from the Bronx? Yeah, well, I get your point, but my girlfriend got this sexy Spider-Girl costume, and it really spices things up, know what I'm saying? Huh. I most certainly do not. J. Jonah Jameson is not one to be judgmental, but you, sir, are an extremely disturbed man! Goodbye! Folks, you've no doubt heard about the riot at Empire State University. But this is not your usual toxic mix. Underage drinking, entitled millennials, and hormones run rampant. Authorities are keeping a tight lid on the situation, but my sources tell me the demons drug the students, turning them into deadly rage machines. What has become of our fair city, ladies and gentlemen, when we have to fear our own children? Our neighbors, our husbands and wives. Be vigilant, be on guard, and keep a close eye on that barista with the man bun making your skinny latte, or you could be next. Friends, there's a fine line between being a conspiracy theorist and seeing a clear pattern. I walked that line, and I am confident in perceiving a common thread among these attacks on Oscorp and Norman Osborn by the demons. The motive? It's hard to ascribe motive to lunatics. But I suspect it's no accident that they're striking at both a pillar of our corporate community and the center of our city's government. It's our very way of life that's under assault. As I have always warned, if you've been listening to me, you're ready. If not, I'll pray for you. Our next caller reports a problem I saw coming a mile away. Go ahead, ma'am. Well, I was coming out of the bathtub last night when I glanced out my window, and, and what do I see? Spider-Man, swinging by like he owns the place. I was naked! Madam, you have my sympathies. Just imagine what sort of deviant personality would dress up like that in the first place. And it's a short step from there to peeping Tom activity. Folks, it doesn't matter if you live on the first floor or the 31st. Keep your curtains drawn. Lock your windows. 
A webbed pervert walks among us! You night owls may have seen lights flickering out at the raft Supermax prison last night. Sadly, it was not because one of their inmates got the chair. No. Apparently, someone there hit on an idea I actually think has merit, which is making that recidivist criminal Electro pay for his room and board by powering the prison himself, saving taxpayers money. Not surprisingly, though, it turns out he hates actual work as much as he loves robbing and murdering, so they had to go back to the city's grid, which I'd imagine is why I still can't run my microwave and toaster at the same time without blowing a fuse! I've got a lot of people asking me what they can do now that they've woken up to the danger we're facing. I wish there were an easy answer. Obviously, we have to be aware of the danger posed by the criminal element, but we also need to hold to account those whose job it is to protect us. The police, these sable agents who work for the mayor, work for us. And we must not tolerate anyone who contributes to the lawlessness sweeping Manhattan. And yes, that very much includes Spider-Man. Here's another call of a type I've been getting a lot lately. Speak! Mr. Jameson, I want to apologize. I used to think you were an alarmist. But look what's happened to the city. I'm afraid to walk the streets. As well you should be. And I accept your apology. It's understandable you were bamboozled by the mainstream voices telling you everything was dandy, nothing to worry about, go out and consume, don't ask questions. I was a low voice in the wilderness then, but now more and more people like you are realizing who spoke the truth. And that, my friends, is how we will take our city back. Even the mole people living in the sewers know about the high-speed chase between police, Spider-Man, and the demons. Once again, Spider-Man makes a bad situation infinitely worse. And we have a highly intelligent caller who agrees with me. You're on with J. Jonah Jameson. Yes, Mr. Jameson. I was trying to get to work, and I was almost run over. Look, I understand that Spider-Man saved the kidnapped victim, and I'm glad about that. But I could have been killed. Not just... This is the problem with that masked maniac. The police are able to coordinate efforts, block streets, lay down tire shredding strips, because they're a team. Spider-Man is a one-man show who cares about one thing. Spider-Man! And you almost paid for that. With your life! Folks, the mastermind of the City Hall bombing has finally been brought to justice, and shockingly, it's philanthropist Martin. Now, I'll discuss in a moment what kind of twisted Jekyll and Hyde mentality it takes to lead such a double life. But first, a word of caution to everyone celebrating his arrest. Yes, it's good that he's in jail, but look at all the things we didn't know. How long was he a suspect without anyone telling us? How long did he have a deadly biological weapon that could kill us all? Shouldn't we have been told? Evacuated the city? It's not an accident that we weren't given the information we need to protect ourselves and our families. Someone made that decision. Was it the police? The mayor? I know one guilty party for sure, and his initials are Spider-Man. Now, reports are coming in that Martin Lee, along with exhibiting freakish abilities like those of you-know-who, has lately seemed to display almost a split personality. <laughs> this is hogwash and a clear attempt to evade justice for his crimes. Only a fool would believe that he's Mr. Positive one moment, helping the poor with a smile, then suddenly he's Mr. Negative, blowing up... Wait a minute! Mr. Negative! That's gold, Jared! Gold! Trademark it! Stat! Ha! <laughs> as I was saying, folks, Martin Lee's evil side, or as everyone is now calling him, Mr. Negative, has been revealed as the culprit for the City Hall bombing. New polls are in! 
Mayor Osborne's approval ratings have spiked since Martin Lee's arrest. He seems to shoe in for re-election. I've got one of his supporters on the line. Speak! Mayor Osborne's got my vote. He got Lee and recovered the WMD. He saved us. And Spider-Man had a lot to do with... Let me stop you right there, because you're obviously not seeing the big picture. Yes, the threat was averted. But how did things get to that point? Where did this devil's breath come from? Why does Spider-Man always seem to know things before we do? The threat's not really over until we know it won't happen again, and I'm not exactly up to my mustache in confidence. Mark my words, it's no time for New Yorkers to let their guard down. It's happened, people. The chickens have come home to roost. Of course, by chickens, I mean the lunatics who've escaped from Rikers Island. The home they're coming to is yours. Thanks to Spider-Man attracting these psychos to our city like moths to a plane. We had them all stashed right off the coast of Manhattan. If only someone had pointed out what a bad idea that is. Wait! I did! So listen to me now. Lock your doors. Arm yourselves with whatever you can get your hands on. It is now every man, woman, and child for themselves. And with reports that the Devil's Breath WMD has again been stolen, I have a very bad feeling it's only going to get worse from here. Converge on Lower Chinatown. Alarmist. Paranoid. Conspiracy theory. All nasty words people have used to insult and demean me. But now, after years of me trying to warn you all, here we are. Spider-Man has literally brought a plague down upon us. Why do I blame him and not Martin Lee? I do blame Martin Lee. He deserves swift justice, but he's a lunatic terrorist. This is what they do. Whereas Spider-Man claims to be a hero. Yet, he obviously knew about the threat and didn't warn us. He either thought he'd handled it, which makes him criminally negligent, or he was in on it, which makes him a terrorist too. There is someone else who isn't emerging from this crisis in a positive light. Mayor Osborne. Experimenting on something as deadly as Devil's Breath in the heart of Manhattan is the height of irresponsibility. What did Osborne know and when did he know it? The answer could mean the difference between electoral defeat, impeachment, and prison. Stay tuned to the only voice you can trust in these dire times. Mine! My friends, I'm getting a lot of frantic calls from people trying to get out of Manhattan. While I understand the impulse, that is not the answer. I've been in touch with the National Disease Center, and they've assured me they're working on an anti-serum. But for their efforts to bear fruit, we need to keep our composure. Here's why we have to stay where we are. Firstly, we need to keep the disease contained. The more it spreads and the more people who are sick, the fewer resources there are to go around. And I have received personal assurances from officials in Albany that relief convoys are coming, containing food and medicine and, uh, excuse me, I've just been handed an update. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. Uh, it seems the relief convoys I just mentioned are being attacked by escaped inmates from Rikers Island Prison. Spider-Man, this is on you! You weren't there in the most charitable reading of the situation! You failed to stop the breakout! Worst case, you were responsible for it! You always claim to be on our side. Well, Webhead, if that's true, you are rapidly running out of chances to prove it! Do a riot. Nearest units converge on Lower Chinatown. Folks, the city is in crisis. We have bridges and tunnels closed. People who work in the city but don't live here are trapped within. Others have been barred from homes placed under emergency quarantine. I'm hearing reports of tent cities, people sleeping in parks. It's like the depression and the 1918 flu epidemic all rolled into one. I know times are hard and we are all struggling, but if you see someone who needs help, do what you can. 
That's the only way we'll make it through this. We must pull together or fall apart. Jared, write that down. That was a good one. I've had numerous callers today reporting that entire city blocks are being taken over by escaped inmates from Rikers. These are literal no-go zones in the heart of Manhattan. A dystopian future from 70s movies come to life. Why don't the police stop it, you ask? Oh, you're going to love this. It seems the prisoners ambushed a convoy carrying weapons and ammunition for the authorities and took it all for themselves. The police are outgunned by their own guns. All right, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where we see if Sable International and Spider-Man are the protectors they claim to be. These criminals aren't hiding. They're right in plain sight. Deary, come get them. Well, we're waiting! More and more listeners are warning that the mayor's sable agents, ostensibly here to protect us, are behaving more like an occupying army. But let's hear it from the caller. Go ahead. They won't let me in my building. Said it's quarantine. I said, fine, let me in and I'll stay there. They pointed their guns at me, ran me off like a criminal. I got no place to go. Caller, this is deeply disturbing to me. I promise you, I'll bring it to the attention of the proper authorities. Emergencies do not permit the suspension of human rights. Your elected officials may not be willing to fight for you, but J. Jonah Jameson is. The mass breakout at Rikers Island, which camera footage clearly shows Spider-Man involved in, has spilled countless hardened criminals into our streets at the worst possible time. I want to hear how it's affecting you. Speak! I don't know who I'm more scared of. The criminals or the Sable people? They've all got guns. I mean, it's like the Wild West out here. If one doesn't kill you, the other will. You raise a very salient point, caller. In times of martial law, civil liberties are most at risk. My advice? Keep your head down. Don't go out unless you have to. Trust the police before Sable. They're from here. They're in this with us. Document any abuses. At some point, this will be over, and they will be held accountable. Well, what do we do about the escaped inmates from Rikers, Mr. Jameson? They'll do anything. Looting, home invasion, murder? Fight back. Arm yourselves with whatever you can. Legal firearms, baseball bats, pepper spray, hell, cooking spray in the eyes if that's all you got. We're New Yorkers. We don't lie down for anyone. Okay, but what if it's one of these nut jobs with powers? Like that rhinoceros guy. And my friend, you pray. And you go down fighting. Electro trying to destroy our power grid. The Vulture raining death from above. Spider-Man egging them both on in the very heart of our city, brawling like children. Lethal children, pitching a tantrum of death and destruction. I'm often asked, why do menaces like this end up with awesome powers? Why not someone like you, Jonah? <laughs> well, I have considered trying to use advanced science to give me powers. Only so I could protect you in a more hands-on way, of course. But after much reflection, I've decided against it. Because power corrupts. I'm a man of the people. And I want to stay one of the hard-working, ordinary people of New York. So I'll just help via my talk show, my publishing empire, and my vast personal fortune. No need to thank me. It's what a man of the people does. I realize Norman Osborn claimed he was stepping back from running Oscorp when he was elected. But has he? Or is he using his office, his public trust, to enrich himself beyond imagining? And with threats like Electro, the Devil's Breath Sickness, and who knows what else, has his greed endangered us all? These questions need to be asked. And as long as there is breath in my body, I will ask them. We 
have a return caller who recently raised concerns about Sable agents abusing their authority. Let's find out. Are things any better? There's less people complaining. You know why? Because anyone who does disappears. You seen all these Sable bases popping up around town? I heard they're prison camps for anyone who steps out of line. I've heard those rumors as well. And while I initially thought it was fear-mongering, something I have absolutely no patience for, I have grown increasingly concerned. Why won't they let me in to inspect their bases? What are they hiding? We still abide by the Constitution, folks, and that includes protection against unreasonable searches and seizures and freedom of speech. So if you have concerns, if you see abuses happening, call me. If the authorities won't listen, I will. And I will spread the word to our fellow New Yorkers. If these tyrants think they can silence me, let them try. No one puts a muzzle on J. Jonah Jameson. Because some people are spreading scurrilous rumors about me, I want to address the matter of the Scorpion right now. Yes, I paid for the procedure that empowered him. We desperately needed someone to bring down Spider-Man. It's not my fault the treatments drove him crazy. It's that ivory tower elite scientist who was so hungry for my money he didn't take proper precaution. No one believes in personal responsibility more than J. Jonah Jameson. But in this, I can categorically say I am blameless. Does anyone else find it suspicious that this rhino person always knocks down buildings and tears up roads, which someone ends up making money rebuilding? Am I suggesting a conspiracy? You're damn right! Now, if you've seen the man testify in court, you know the rhino is too stupid to plan anything himself. So who's the mastermind? Well, who else is always there? Supposedly, Fighting Rhino, but actually leading him around like a red cape does a bull. Say it with me, Spider-Man! My friends, the Rhino and the Scorpion are back behind bars. But only after wreaking unimaginable havoc in a reckless rampage with Spider-Man. Hopefully, they'll never see daylight again. But we need to be ready if they do. Normal humans can't stand against the likes of the Rhino. So, here's my proposal. You've heard of police dogs, right? Now bear with me. We train, outfit, and deploy police rhinoceroses. You got a Rhino? We got a Rhino too, baby! <laughs> Folks, I know you're scared. But when I hear reports of looting, of fights over food or medicine, I say to myself, we are better than this. You are better than this. I've known you my whole life. I am proud to be a member of this community. Don't give in to fear. Help each other. Stand up for those who need it. I've always hated hearing Spider-Man called a hero. Because real heroes are the people who get up every day with no special powers and do the right thing simply because it is the right thing. So I'm asking you now, be the heroes I know you all are. J. Jonah Jameson believes in you. I have never lied to you before, and I'm not gonna start now. It's looking bad. We're running short on time. The elderly especially are in rough shape. And the NDC, despite working around the clock, as yet has no results. But do not forget this. We are New Yorkers. We take care of each other. We do what's right to the very end. And if we are facing the end, I can tell you this from the bottom of my heart. There's no one I'd rather have at my side. Whatever comes next, we will face it bravely. Together. As New Yorkers. My friends, the privilege has been mine. With the 
island of Manhattan quarantine. There are a lot of scared people out there. Here's one. You're on the air. They're turning back boats to the mainland. All bridges and tunnels are closed. Aircraft grounded. They're leaving us here to die, aren't they? Calm down, caller. I have always been the voice of reason, so listen to me now. I know from my vast network of contacts that the National Disease Center is working on recreating the stolen anti-serum. A cure is coming. The question is, how long will it take? Will it get here in time? But we've been through tough spots before, and we'll get through this too. They'll never finish the cure in time for us. They're writing us off. Manhattan's a graveyard. Not true. The NDC is doing what they can. If they're busy dealing with outbreaks all over the country, or the world, that's less time they have to work on the anti-serum. I know it's hard to trust anyone these days, but you've always been able to trust me to tell it like it is, and I am telling you now, do not violate the quarantine. Stay in your homes. Take care of your families. I'll be right here, facing it with you. We're New Yorkers. We can handle anything. And we can sure as hell beat this. Mark your calendars, folks, because I'm going to say something you thought you'd never hear from me. Spider-Man got it right. Does that mean I was wrong about him? Am I apologizing? Hell no. You see, I have it on good authority that he is a regular listener of this program. And now, it makes a lot of sense. He heard what I said. He internalized it. And he learned. Improved himself. And against all odds, he did the right thing. So, Spider-Man... You're welcome. However, don't think I'm going to go easy on Spider-Man from here on out. I'll be watching, keeping him honest. Spider-Man, since I know you're listening, imagine my eyes on you everywhere you go. I mean, not like the shower. That would be weird. Or, 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 or the bathroom. Or, let's go to commercial. Folks, I'm hearing a lot of praise for Spider-Man lately, and I'm not saying it's entirely unwarranted. He did listen to me after all, and did the right thing in the end. But dial it back, will ya? I can tell it's going to his head. Look at him. The wisecracking, the grandstanding, swinging around the city like he owns it. This is not his city. It's mine. I mean ours. One thing even my detractors have to say about J. Jonah James. I admit when I'm wrong. And while I hoped his efforts in the recent crisis meant Spider-Man was finally becoming a responsible citizen, a mature adult, I am here to confess I was wrong. I wanted to believe it. I hoped it was true. But even a stop clock is right twice a day. And I guess curing the plague was Spider-Man's stop clock moment. You know, looking at the dark days just behind us, most of the people involved have faced consequences. Otto Octavius is in prison. Mayor Osborne resigned in disgrace. Escapees from Rikers continue to be rounded up. The remaining demons and Wilson Fisk's men are fighting over scraps. But funny how Spider-Man has faced no repercussions. Well, sure, you might say he saved us. But should saving all our lives really give him a mulligan on his long history of reckless behavior? Tune in after this message for my answer. Spoiler, no! Some people have accused me of being negative, only criticizing, not offering solutions when it comes to Spider-Man. Here's my solution, and it's very simple. Unmask. Join the police academy. Wear a badge. Then you can catch all the crooks you want, and I'll sing your praises on this very show. And all that hogwash about how that would place his loved ones in danger? Come on! You can't convince me that guy has any loved ones!
After much listener demand, today I am finally going to answer the question I have posed for many years. Spider-Man, threat or menace? Yes, that's right. It's time. I'm taking a position. And that position is... He's both! Sometimes he's a threatening menace, and sometimes he's a menacing threat. But come on, how can you menace someone without also being a threat? And, 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 and vice versa. And for those grammar Nazis among you who say I'm being redundant, it's called art. I'm a wordsmith. It's a rhetorical device. And if you don't like it, I'll tell you where you can shove that device. Okay, my intern is telling me it's time for my pills. We will be right back. I'm getting emails from the rapidly shrinking yet still stubbornly obtuse contingent of Spider-Man fanboys and fangirls blindly insisting he did a wonderful thing, shutting down a drug lab run by a delightful fellow whose street name seems to be... Wait for it! Tombstone! Now, I'm glad he's behind bars, but do you know how Spider-Man shut this operation down? By setting it on fire! Do you know what drug labs do when you set them on fire? They explode! Spider-Man could have taken out the entire block with his criminally reckless grandstanding. Fortunately, New York's bravest, our firefighters, contained the blaze because that's their job. And if Spider-Man had any sense, he'd have turned over whatever information he had on Tombstone to the police and let New York's finest do their job! But no, he thought the best way to handle drug dealing is with arson! Imagine this. A straight shopping cart dents your car. You take it to the auto body shop, only that shop is a front for a drug lord called Tombstone, and he and Spider-Man have decided to have a power struggle at that precise moment. Sir, tell us the rest. I, I start to go in and I see Spider-Man fighting this massive guy with fangs like a shark. That would be one Lonnie Lincoln, a.k.a. Tombstone. Did it seem they were fighting over drug profits or merchandise? I understand there's talk of a new drug that turns its users into zombies. I don't know what it was about. I got my ass out of there. Sir, I understand you've been through a lot, but please refrain from using that kind of language. This is a family show. Sorry. Uh, anyway... I'm glad I split, because pretty soon, the cops and firefighters are there. Ah, the real heroes. What a relief. I think we can all use a happy ending. I thought this was a family show. Jared, get rid of him! Have you ever been driving along, going to work or church, minding your own business, when suddenly, bam, you hit a pothole, damaging your car and ruining your whole day? Well, you know who to blame. No, non-city bureaucracy. Spider-Man. He's been seen leaping down from great heights to pound the ground with maximum force. Why? There's only one possible reason I can think of. He hates us, and he wants us to be miserable. Folks, I have received unsettling reports of Spider-Man in our public parks, where children play, apparently, stalking pigeons. Yes, wild pigeons. You may wonder if he's gone insane, a perfectly valid question, but have you heard of the Goliath bird eating spider? I'll spare you the gory details, but it's a spider big enough to devour birds. Now, Spider-Man sticks to walls like a spider. He jumps like a spider. What else does he do like a spider? So, numerous witnesses saw Spider-Man swinging through Times Square like the glory hound he is, firing webs at electronic billboards and causing them to reboot. Granted, those billboards are an eyesore. In my day, sign painting was an art. But the more pressing question is, what was he up to? I have a theory. He is infecting these billboards with a virus so that they will subliminally hypnotize pedestrians. Hypnotize them into what? into liking Spider-Man, and he's been doing it for years. This is the only plausible explanation for how many fans this menace seems to have. Ah! 
<laughs> Another low information spider fanboy tried to troll me, as the young people say, by claiming Spider-Man was providing a public service plugging leaks in water towers. Let me tell you why this itsy bitsy brain spider was climbing this particular water spout, people. Because he tampered with the water pressure system. He was seen earlier messing with a valve that only qualified workers are supposed to use. Wake up, America! Spider-Man creates the problems he then solves, then expects you to reward him with your adoration. The sad thing is, all too many do. Fortunately, you know better, thanks to me. Has anyone else heard reports of Spider-Man literally seeking out clouds of smog to swing through? Is this the behavior of a sane individual? I'll tell you what I think is going on here. When I was a lad, there was a problem with juvenile delinquents sniffing glue to get high. Knowing Spider-Man's weak moral character and thrill-seeking personality, I guess the same principle is at work here. But inhaling toxic substances also damages the brain, which actually explains a lot about Spider-Man. He's swinging through the city, hopped up on smog! Okay, this one confounded me for a while. Apparently, Spider-Man's been seen throughout the city tampering with steam regulators. Aside from generally being a vandal and a troublemaker, why would he do this? I'll tell you why. Because when the city has to send crews out to fix these problems, they need police to direct traffic around them. That's officers who aren't stopping crime. Which leaves, say it with me, Spider-Man. He's trying to take our brave officers' jobs. Remember when Spider-Man had a sidekick? The Black Cat, a curvaceous young lady in leather. Not the kind you'd bring home to mother. And then, it turned out, she was a thief! Big shock, right? Well, I hear she's back. And let me make a prediction. Spider-Man's going to give her a second chance. Is it because he's naive? A thief himself? Or is he just thinking with his web shooters? Spider-Man, I know you're listening, so let me issue a warning now. As the old saying goes, lie down with cats, Get up with fleas. What's that? <laughs> my intern is yammering in my ear again. It's dogs? I thought it was cats. It doesn't matter. The metaphor still applies. Dogs, cats. Go away, Jared. Friends, today we have a caller who's been a victim of what people call the corruption that infects otherwise law-abiding citizens, causing them to go on violent rampages. Police assure me these corrupted are not responsible for their actions, so I am not divulging my guest's name. Tell us, caller, what was it like? <sighs> Surreal. Like, like I was in a nightmare world, surrounded by monsters. And every dark impulse I ever had, anger, fear, hate, was ramped up and turned loose. Terrifying. And I understand that while you were in the grip of this madness, Spider-Man beat you up. Well, he stopped me hurting people. By beating you up? I mean, he used as little force as possible. That sounds like a yes. There you have it, people. Spider-Man beats up the mentally ill. Now, some people falsely say I make up stories about Spider-Man. And this will not help my case because it sounds outlandish, but I have personally seen listener-recorded video of Spider-Man snatching pigeons. Pigeon napping. Why? What possible purpose could there be for such aberrant behavior? I've thought about it long and hard, and I think I've figured it out. He's eating them. We've always assumed Spider-Man is a man with the attributes of a spider. But what if it's the reverse? What if somehow a spider gained the powers of a man and he's stalking his prey? Somewhere there's a giant web with these poor pigeons stuck in it, waiting to be devoured. And will it stop at pigeons? Will we be next? I promise you this. I will not rest until I have the answers.
Bring your children into the room, friends, because I'm delivering a lesson impressionable youngsters need to hear. My guest today is a man who learned the hard way that dressing up like Spider-Man isn't cool. Go ahead, sir. Well, I, I wanted to fight crime and help people, and I'm a big Spider-Man fan, so I put on a costume like his and tried to do what he does. Boy, was that a mistake. I almost got killed. I'm just lucky the real Spider-Man saved me. Let me stop you right there, because I think the salient point has been made. Emulate Spider-Man in any way, and you will die! Don't do it, kids! And that's another one of Uncle Jonah's life lessons. Jared, trademark that! Our next caller was involved in a frightening hostage situation. Tell us about it, please. Oh my god, I thought I was gonna die. But Spider-Man got involved and it... Totally unconcerned with your safety. Well, he did save me. Through sheer luck, you could have been brutally killed. Yeah, sure, but I, I could have been killed if he wasn't there. Let's refrain from unfounded speculation and focus on solid, established fact. Spider-Man does not care if you live or die. Now, if there's one thing I can't abide, it's egomaniacs who use the internet solely to draw attention to themselves. And we just had a real meeting of the minds in that respect, as the online personality screwball pranked fellow narcissist Spider-Man into an epic snipe hunt that put innocent people in danger. On the one hand, Screwball did show us all just how gullible and reckless Spider-Man is, rushing headlong into dangerous situations without knowing or caring who he'll hurt as long as cameras are on him. On the other hand, Screwball herself is no better. Unlike me, she's not trying to expose wrongdoers like Spider-Man as a public service. She's just in it to promote herself, which I think is absolutely despicable. Now don't go away. Just the facts with J. Jonah Jameson will be right back after this important message about how you can buy my book. Folks, you've heard me express grave concerns about the risk to civil liberties posed by the police department's crime system and their omnipresent towers. But at least the intention is to stop crimes. Now recently, Spider-Man has been seen tampering with these very towers. And it's reasonable that my loyal listeners suspect he is disabling the towers so he can commit his unlawful misdeeds with impunity. But Spider-Man is not your ordinary run-of-the-mill menace. Oh, he's a 12th level kung fu master, 50 moves ahead menace. Which is why I think he's actually hacking into these towers to spy on you and me. Your only defense? Listen to my show. All the time. If he's gonna spy on us, let him hear that we're on to him. By listening to me. Every waking moment. Ah, longtime caller Officer Andrews is back with us. As always, thank you for your service to our fair city, Officer. What's new? Mr. Jameson, you know I'm a fan. When I just saw Spider-Man in action, I worked with him to stop Wilson Smith's men from stealing back their hard drive. And he's a stand-up guy. Now wait a second, my friend. I'm not questioning your word. I'm sure what you said happened. But have you considered it was in Spider-Man's interest to help you? How so? He obviously had a long-standing feud with Fisk and wants him put away. That doesn't make him Mother Teresa. It just means he had a grudge. Look, I hear you. But why can't we give him the benefit of the doubt? Why? Because he hides behind that mask. You train. You stand up with your badge and name tag on, and you do your job every day. He runs and hides. If you caused the kind of damage he does, what would happen? I'd be doing paperwork until the day I retire, and probably riding a desk, too. And why, my dear friend, should you have to follow these rules, and not him? You know, that's a damn good point. I knew you'd come around. Once again, a low-information member of Spider-Man's cult, sorry, fan club, wants to make him a saint. Sounds insane, but I always hear people out before passing judgment. Go ahead, caller. Yes, well, Spider-Man has been all over this city, 
stopping crimes, large and small, helping people, doing good. Wrong, wrong, wrong! I thought you were gonna hear me out. I've heard enough. Rational arguments are clearly lost on you, madam, but there may be hope for others out there, so let me go over it again. It is not helping when a vigilante leaps into the middle of a crime scene or emergency situation with no training, expertise, or public identity. What if he injures someone? Who holds him accountable? The answer, my friends, is me. Police reports show a rash of break-ins recently. The victim of one of them is here with us now. What happened, ma'am? Well, my business was broken into. A flower shop. Who breaks into a flower shop? I was cleaned out. I, I couldn't believe it. I, I thought the area was safe. I see Spider-Man around all the time. My dear, you've learned the hard way, the sad truth about Spider-Man. He only cares about the glory. Something as, forgive me, prosaic as a break-in and robbery is beneath his notice. Do not rely on him to keep your property safe. The only thing he truly values is his own massive ego. Friends, there's a caller on the line we all need to hear from. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, I almost got run over by some psychos in a high-speed car chase with the cops. Hey, it's lucky no one got killed. But... But here's the really messed up part. I saw Spider-Man in the area, and he didn't do a thing to stop it. Aha! Of course not! Why? Because no doubt, it was too much effort. Spider-Man doesn't like effort. He wants everything to be easy, or he's not interested. Typical of his generation. You know what I blame? The internet. Uh, except for the part of the internet that carries my show, which is performing a great public service. My next caller is a courageous member of her local neighborhood watch, here to share a concern and a warning. I just want to tell New Yorkers that drug activity is rampant. There are deals going down practically in the open. My watch alerts the police, tries to flag down Spider-Man. Sorry, just to be clear, you see Spider-Man in the area, and he doesn't lift a finger to stop these drug deals? Exactly. You were right about him all along. Jared, record that! I want it playing on a loop! A loop! You know what a loop is! Get ready, folks, because this is a bombshell. We have on the line a lady whose husband was kidnapped by Spider-Man. What? No, no, you've got it all wrong. My husband was kidnapped by criminals who shoved him into the trunk of a car. Spider-Man found him and got him out, then arrested the criminals when they came back. Pardon me, ma'am, I didn't hear that last part over my intern's utter incompetence. You realize, of course, that it's possible Spider-Man arranged the kidnapping so he could save your husband and grab all the glory? Huh, that seems like a lot of trouble to go to when he could just stop actual crime. It's clear we are at an impasse. My best to you and your husband, madam. Jared, go to commercial, then fire yourself, then rehire yourself before the commercial ends. But no, your job ends by a threat. If I paid you, I'd cut your salary in half. Not long ago, the demons committed another heinous act of terrorism when they took a tour bus and all of its occupants hostage. We have one of those occupants here with us now. A Mrs. Edna Packer of Edina, Minnesota. What happened, ma'am? Well, these horrible men in masks came on board with guns and held us all hostage. I thought I'd never see my kids again. And then the police saved us, and, and Spider-Man, of course. He was so brave. Mrs. Packer, I am so glad you're safe. And also, that I can enlighten you about Spider-Man. You're from out of town, so you don't know what a menace he is. He saved me and my husband. But look at the big picture. Do you have these kind of crimes in a diner? Oh, certainly not. And do you have Spider-Man in a diner? Uh, no. And that 
is not a coincidence. You're welcome, Mrs. Packer. I consider explaining these things a public service. Now, friends, you know I'm always open to differing points of view. So after a police officer called me out on social media for being too hard on Spider-Man, and it went viral and people just wouldn't shut up about it, I agreed to a debate. Officer, welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so, uh, so me and my guys went to shoot out with some desperate characters who had nothing to lose. I mean, they didn't care if we all lived or died. And somebody would have, trust me, if Spider-Man hadn't helped us. All right, fair enough. I'm not saying he never does anything good. I'm saying he causes more problems than he solves. You had to go to the academy, right? Be thoroughly trained? You have rules to follow? Sure, but he seems to know what he's doing, too. It worked out for the best this time. Next time, how do we know Spider-Man won't cause the deaths of all concerned? Well, he never has before, has he? I believe we'll just have to agree to disagree. Thank you for your service. Goodbye! Savvy listeners don't need me to tell you that the demons cult, gang, terrorist organization, all the above apply, is out of control. We have a survivor of one of their brazen attacks on the line. Go ahead. I was home, in my building, when we got word there were demons on the roof planting bombs. We had to evacuate, but we also heard there were snipers waiting to pick us off if we tried to leave. Despicable. Fortunately, the police and the bomb squad handled the situation. And Spider-Man, he... Jared, cut the call! <laughs> Sorry. Hard to hear when we're talking over each other. Clearly someone traumatized by a terrifying experience. For resources to help with PTSD, go to our website. Another public service from J. Jonah Jameson. Friends, you know about the Spider-Man related breakout at Rikers Island. Where are those escapees going now? To your neighborhood! Our next caller witnessed it personally. Please, tell us. I was just coming back from the store when a swarm of guys in prison jumpsuits came out of nowhere. Like a pack of wolves. Robbing, beating, looting. Lucky for us, Spider-Man took them down. Yes, well, you know how criminals are. Rival factions and all. He didn't want the competition. Competition? Spider-Man didn't steal anything. That you know of. Next caller! I've expressed my concern with Sable International's heavy-handed tactics. Our next caller witnessed them firsthand. Tell us what happened. Uh, a bunch of us were protesting Sable, standing up for our rights like you always say, and suddenly they just start beating on people and arresting us for no reason. This is always the risk of giving anyone too much power. They abuse it. Be aware that if you stand up to them, there may be consequences. It's up to you whether that's a risk worth taking. For me, clearly it is. The crazy thing was, Spider-Man set us free. Yes, well that's what happens when the supposed authorities start breaking the law. Next to them, other lawbreakers don't seem so bad. Thanks for calling. We're out of time. People, I always thought Spider-Man was a few geese short of a gaggle, but this confirms it. As if that atrocious white spider wasn't enough, I've had repeated sightings of him in a new outfit. Some sort of punk rock inspired thing that makes sane people want to tear out their eyeballs with a rusty spoon. Now, I was around for the birth of punk rock, and I did not care for it then. It's a flagrant declaration of disrespect for authority, and if Spider-Man is going down that route... Oh, no. No, I just had a terrifying thought. What if this isn't the Spider-Man we know, but some sort of metal mohawk-wearing copycat? What if there's more than one? Jared, go to break. I need to lie down. Folks, you know I'm not one to promote conspiracy theories. 
except ones I think are worthy of further discussion, like this one. I've heard reports of Spider-Man hovering around radio towers. At first, I thought he was sabotaging them. But a far more alarming possibility came to mind. In his misguided delusion that he is protecting us, is he hacking into all our conversations? Business deals, credit card transactions, those personal calls with the wife when you're on a long, lonely book tour. I mean, when one is on a book tour, I wasn't talking about myself, I don't do that sort of thing, and anyone who thinks they have recordings of me doing it is wrong!